Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Benz, for the introduction. Uh, I have a high, hard work here maintaining you interested before lunch, so I'm going to start right away. I'm going to give you like a our general overview about the evolution of the submarine systems. Um, communications. Communications is everything between people, between machines from a long time ago. And before the telegraph was invented, people communicate with letters. So at that time, to communicate to one continent to another continent, uh, it spent like weeks, months to communicate, that communication get to another place. So the first transatlantic telegraph cable allowed those communication to reduce the time from weeks, maybe months, to minutes. Um, in 1858, that cable, uh, that long, only th uh, three weeks, uh, but the first official uh, communication was a letter between the Queen Victoria and the President of the United States at that moment, that was James Buchanan. But the pioneers of that keep working and finally get a successful cable in 1866. Well, the technology continued evolution and the telephony was invented and the first transatlantic telephone coaxial cable, the TAT-1, was an initiative for the American, the British, and the Canadian uh, to get the communication. And so it was only uh, one pair cable that had only three, uh, 36 telephone channels. And I want to appoint that because compared to what we have today, it's, well, we have bigger, bigger in capacity. And the next step with that was to change the coaxial cable with the, uh, with the use of the f um, optical fiber. So the, the TAT-8 allowed that and um, grow, a, grow the, the bad wind considerably. But the very, very important big change that, that, that happened in, in the submarine was the invention of the optical amplifier. Before, at that time, before that, the optical signal was converted to electrical signal and was amplified in that level and was converted again in, 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 in light. But with the invention of the optical amplifier, they could use more channels. So the bandwidth grow uh, considerably. Uh, this is uh, our experience in, in the submarine cable. The SAM-1 uh, was built around 2000, and it connects the United States with Puerto Rico, Brazil, Argentina, Chile, Peru, and Guatemala. It's all around South America. That cable was built at that moment with an initial capacity of 480 gigabytes. But with the latest technology evolution, we were able to upgrade, and upgrade it to 19 terabytes. Uh, we have this other cable, the Unisur cable. That's what, a very old cable that was uh, expired, and we bought it, and reused it, and changed the equipment in the earth, in the land, and we been able to, to upgrade and use a better, more capacity. The PCCS was most lately in the 2015, is a consortium cable with 80 terabytes totally. And our high-speed submarine subsea cable from this year, where I'm gonna uh, talk to you is the Marea cable, that is the, the highest capacity subsea cable that connects the trans transatlantic from Virginia Beach to Spain. So it's the, it's the cable who have the, low, the lowest latency to get to the uh, southern Europe and to the Middle East from the US. The Marea have eight paper fare, um, and we did it in partnership with, Telsu, uh, with Facebook and Microsoft and Telsius. Telsius operated cable. And the Brusa cable 
is also a new cable from Virginia Beach to Brazil. Have two, have branching unit in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and Fortaleza, Brazil. It's uh, 120 terabytes total uh, cable and have eight fiber pairs. Well, it's, I'm gonna explain, we are really, really, uh, this is layer one, when, when I personally call layer zero because it goes very down in the, in the deep in the, in the sea. So the submarine system are, co are consisted in two main, uh, the wet plant and the dry plant. And the dry plant is basic, the power feed equipment and the terminal equipment. And in the wet plant, we have the cable, the branching unit, when you have more than two landing stations, the repeated equalizers, and the chips. I wanted to show you here the, the, this, this, the cable structure. The first picture shows the cable, very old cable, coaxial cable. And the, in the middle, it's like, it's like a simple, for the, the cable used in terrestrial route, and the other is the submarine cable. Uh, the main difference is the protection because the cable has to be very protected to be under the sea and avoid the corruption, the cor corrosion. And there are several uh, types of cables. And for example, the double armor cable is used mainly near to the branching uh, in the, in the, to the beach manhole, near to the, to the land. And the lightweight is used in the deepest part of the ocean. So there are different types and depends of the, where is the land, if, there, if the topology of the subsea use one of another type of cable. But the, other, the important issue inside the cables is the fiber. <coughs> there are typical several types of fiber. I wanted to show you here, a, these are the typical denomination and but uh, the providers have been improved um, the effective area which allows the cable to transmit more bandwidth. And at the end, it, for, or for, the, for the customers who, who want to construct a cable, uh, you choose, uh, it's a cost dependency. You know, if you can use a, a cheapest type of fiber with a different uh, characteristic, or you can use, like, a, if you have more quality, you have more bandwidth, uh, you can use, for example, the X3000 that have, is one of the best fiber today. And we use it in Brusa. The repeaters. The repeaters, if you see the pictures, the, 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 the pictures, it, this is the housing, for example, what is it outside the repeaters. And it's, the same that, that haven't changed too much from the years. Because the, that picture is the, the first picture in, on, on the left, is what was used for the coaxial cable in the TAT one as very several years ago. And the lowest picture of the repair is that what we use in the Bruce address. Uh, and the material they use, is they use uh, beryllium copper and also titanium in this year, but because those repairs have to be under the sea uh, for 25 years. Imagine that they need to be uh, a material very resistant for the, for the water and everything there, uh, down there. Um, inside of the repeater is the optical amplifier. This is mainly the characteristic of the amplifier but what I wanted to show you here is that the inside of the amplifier you can have, the, the amplifier can work with only one pump. But usually we, you, we can use two or three or four and it allows you to have more uh, reliability and, and redundancy in, in, in the subsea because you have to be there 25 years and it might, all the communication can be cut if one, if, if, if one failures or does it, it depends of cost, but in outside, uh, the, 
the providers offer you different uh, types and you choose what what do you for for the the cost the, um, I'm sorry if you want to have a more reliability uh, system you can use four or if you need a lowest cost uh, and you can use two pumps the branching unit the branching unit are used when you have more than two uh, landing stations from the long time ago the the branching unit was simple only to divide the fiber. This was fixed fiber, static branching unit, like the fiber drum branching unit that is, was used in the SAM-1 and then the other systems. In the 1990s, uh, the branching unit appeared the optical ad drop multiplexing branching because at the beginning, the, there was only the fiber who had uh, routing. Now the routing is made in the wave level. So you can uh, decide what, uh, you can divide the spectrum inside of the, of the fiber and divide that traffic in, in each landing station or in directions. The optical ad drop multiplexy branching unit is fixed. So when the, when the branching unit is in, in, inside the sea, uh, you decide at that moment, when you design the system, how you want to divide or the percentage of the spectrum that you send to one place to another. The, uh, the new ROM that the reconfigured adopted a drop multiplexing branching unit allow you to, to reconfigure from, from the land that, that, that spectrum. And especially when you have a cut failure, you can redirect all that uh, spectrum and all that traffic, uh, avoiding the cut and lost the connection. The other is the, the chips. There are several types of chips, one for survey, one for installation, and maintenance at the end. And Maybe, maybe all of you know, but the cable is designed in the plant completely, completely. And so so the, the cable is inside the, the ship when they're gonna be landing in the sea. Uh, in our experience, for example, for the Brusa cable, they, they use two ships, one coming from Virginia Beach and the other coming from Rio, and they start to land together and they get together in, in San Juan and finish the connection there. Uh, the dry plant components. This is kind of basic. It's only to power the the the, the, the system, uh, the terminal equipment, and the DB dual DM. Uh, what I wanted to show you here is mainly that the providers out there they offer two options: the turnkey system and the open cable system. The open cable system, the turnkey system is when they offer the whole solution together. They construct the cable, they uh, put the, the power equipment, the terminal equipment, and they decide what type of the DWM you, you can use. But now, this new, the open cable is that they're only, they only, they put the power, the terminal equipment, and they allow you to choose whatever provider you can use for the WM that uh, give you the flexibility. If you, for example, that to use the same provider that you have for, for your terrestrial, network, so can be smooth, and, and because in the past wasn't that possible, so now they can do that. Uh, for testing, as I told you, as the cable is constructed in the plant, they started to do the testing there to assure that the cable doesn't have any, any, any problem, that all, all the, the fiber was, wasn't caught, the repeaters are completely working, and the same, they, doing, they continue doing testing inside the, when they put it in the ship. And then when, this, when the system is in under construction, when everything is under construction, they continue with the testing. And when they commission the test, uh, they commission the, 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 the cable. They are, they're 
continually doing tests to deliver that that cable to to the to the user. For maintenance, well, here is like some statistic that that I that I found that I want to show you. Uh, uh, it's like a fault history about the the cable system in, in, from 2010, 2016. It shows that mainly in the American e area and in the MAI area was the biggest uh, problem about false system. And I was continue reading and apparently the, those, the, the other area, Australia and Trans-Pacific, was mostly, not that they wasn't so many faults, you know, but they didn't report it. So the, the lock of information not allowed to do the statistics very well. And, and they, then sometimes it's a, a cable fails and it's not reported, nobody knows. And, but now, with the technology and the quickly, and everybody's using internet, everybody's using the network connecting together, so uh, easily it gets noticed by the end customer, by the end users, and it's reported. And the other chart shows like an average estimated repair by region. Well. The, the region they have the, the worst time, the Trans-Pacific, mainly due to because those cables are in zones where more shipping, uh, shipping ships, uh, fishing ships, sorry, are located and, and also as, as, as long as the car, the, the, the system is are longer and make difficult to the company who are going to repair to find where exactly is the fault. So they take time to, to get to that. Um, another time, the maintenance is basically in separate. You can do maintenance around the area where are the, the fishing ships. You can do patrols in, with the air. You can do patrol with, with what other ships. And you can do a terrestrial patrol. For example, we do in, in our landing station. Is that like we have like a continue. We have people doing uh, patrols near to the beach manhole, to the where is the the backhole between the the cable station and the man, beach manhole to to be prepared or to that nothing is, no, nobody is dug in, we are companies that can dug in for constructing local fiber to interrupt the service. Additionally, there are national legis legislation that prohibited the fishing ships to get around the zones where are all the submarine cables located. And there are the cable maintenance agreement. So there, the traditional group agreement, there are uh, companies that get together and have the chips prepared to go and repair all the cables around the world. And there are the private club agreements. For example, in our case, we use the ABMA, that is in the Atlantic region. They have chips ready. Uh, for example, they have a, in Curaçao, there is one chip always uh, ready. If we have any cut, any fault, uh, they go in hours to repair the cable. Upgrade. This is what I wanted to show you regarding what technology allows our someone to upgrade. Originally, the someone was uh, designed to have 480 uh, gigabytes. Uh, in the eight, 2006, 2007, Nortel was the first in commercialize a new technology, a new uh, wave of uh, the, the modulation. Of the of the of the signal that was sent to to the to the submarine cables and well to the, to any to any network, but this allowed to to we change only the equipment, changing only the equipment in the land. We using the same fiber. We didn't have to change anything, and we started to 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 use 40 gig waves. Then. The following years, it's appeared there stand the other providers starting to do researching and, and it's appeared the, the use of 100 gig waves and we upgrade the cable using 100 gig waves 
Right now, the new cables that are constructed uh, use 100 gig gigs, uh, gigabit uh, waves, and there is testing for 200, 300. They said they're gonna be continued testing, but right now 100 is was commonly used, and I know that is one cable that was built using 150. So uh, since 2013, all of the cable that was constructed uh, uh, with the new technology, they, they upgraded. So this lowers the, the number of new cables in, in, in each region because each uh, provider could upgrade it and fulfill the capacity needs. And, it, and at that age, at the end of the 90s, 60, 96, I uh, started the internet and started the, the more need for more bandwidth. And, but now, nowadays, well, this is what, how, how what the providers who were involved in, in, in that upgrade using the, the new technology for the DWM. Um, I just wanted to show you here what, it, what they are doing right now. There are like two types of tendencies. Some providers say that they can increase the capacity using the L band in the in the in the spectrum. And some other providers say that it's better to put more fibers in the cable. And it depends of if you want to design a new cable uh, because if you use the the L band you need a second repeater inside, second amplifier inside of the repeater. And it means that the repeater is gonna be costly and also that you are adding an additional component that can be damaged or can be have any failure. And other providers say that it's better than add more fiber pairs. And at the end it depends on the cost or what, what do you need and we have to see what what the future in the, this L band because it never in, in the past was used and it's, it's now changing some uh, ways to do the, the increase of the capacity. Uh, I don't know how, how is my time, but uh, I wanted to show you what we have, what is the current capacity outlook. The cables, this is the whole, the old submarine cables that are uh, in all around the world and mainly for, for 2000, 2007. If you see from 2000, 2003, there was, they jumped like eight or a year with no more cables in that region. And it was mainly because of the upgrade, because all, all of the cable that was constructed at IARC, we were able to upgrade. Right now, uh, especially in 2015, 16, 17, with the, change of technology, the content providers, and all the OTTs are pushing more capacity every, every day. So this is changing the way, and there are gonna be new cables, and this is all what are already pu uh, public. But there are several other cables that are coming that are private cables as well. This is for Trans-Pacific region, it's the, it's the same tendency, it's only to show you that, that, that what is there. New cables for the next year or two. And the same for America's region. There is our Brusa cable. And the same for Australasia, the Mea region, and Indian Ocean Pacific. It's kind of, it's general, all the information is there in, in the internet, but I wanted to show you that uh, that the big change the, was that. There is a moment where the, the cables uh, were built in 2000, the big change of the op optical amplifier in 1966 since, since then, uh, it haven't been new changes under the sea, and we'll see. There is a lot of development on submarine cable for, for the following years, drivens, 
by the OTTs and where there are a lot of data that you need to, to transport because uh, you work there in the network and the network communicate to each other. I only wanted to show you how that's the basic, you know, in, in the sub-level, in the la layer one. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>